You know what it kind of smells like to me, actually? When you open up a pack of cigarettes and you smell that smell of the, you know, untouched cigarettes, that's kind of like what it smells like. Now that you said that, 100%. Right, 100%, 100%, right? I mean, it's nice. I used to love that smell. Yeah, it's making my it's, mouth water. Yeah, <laughs> I need a Putting cigarette now. Cigarette? Yeah. In a Brooklyn no man's land where no tourists, no influencers go, we're diving deep into one bodega's handwritten menu and uncovering gems. Hey, what's up, world? I hope you're hungry. So in the before times when I'd take the train to work, I'd always see this bodega with a handwritten sign saying that they sold chuchitos and tamales, and they were clearly Guatemalan. And I never had the courage to go inside until today. So we're gonna go see what they got. I love places like this. No Instagram page, no Yelp reviews, untouched by social media, and absolutely essential to the community. Yeah, so we just got some food at the bodega. They're very nice in there. Um, the guy was pretty knowledgeable. He's able to kind of just tell me about what the different things were that I got. And um, let's try them out, see how they are. These are called checkas. It's a uh, Guatemalan bread. What's it smelling? Like? It's it like good bread, you know? It's not like savory bread, like yeasty? Yeasty, yeah. Like when you walk into Subway? Yes, yeah. Very yeasty. It's not hard, you know, but it's got some, got some body to it, you know? It's not powdered sugar. It's not powdered sugar, no. I think that's just like flour, flour yeah. yeah. Just, uh, all over it. Yeah, so all these breads are supposed to be a little sweet. So usually what they do is they get some cafe. They'll have this for breakfast. They'll dip it in a little coffee. I don't have any coffee right now. I'm just gonna try it just straight up, you know? And I'll dip it in some coffee at home. But let's just see how this is. Mm. I mean, yeah. It's bread. What do you want? It's bread. Um, it's got a nice flavor. It does have that hint of sweetness to it which is nice as you're chewing. It just kind of like, it just kind of develops a bit. I can see why they dip it in the coffee though, because I'm like, it needs something. It needs that moisture to kind of like take it there, you know? So I see why they dip it in coffee. Is it dense? It's not dense, no. It's uh, it's kind of like a medium density. It's kind of like a brown bread. You ever had brown bread from the south? No. What's that? It's what it, it tastes like that. Brown bread. It's like white bread? Uh-huh, but brown. But brown? But it's not weird. Uh-huh. It's sweet like that. I'm gonna try the oven. Ooh, this one. You see the sesame seeds around the edge of it, going all the way around. And again, you see the, um, the flour mm -hmm. on top. It's nice. It's a nice touch. Very, like, kind of a rustic look to it, you know? Give it a shot. Different flavor. From the sesame you think? No, it's not even um, a nutty flavor. It's like um, the sweetness is more aromatic in this bread. I don't know what that flavor is, but it's nice. And Well, when he asked you what that one is, he did just only list the ingredients. He did list the ingredients. <laughs> Which I got on the film. So we'll check that out. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> What's in it? But um, this is not here. Take a bite and tell me. It's almost like a kind of vanilla-y kind of flavor going on. I like this one. Yeah, it tastes like a um, not as sweet vanilla cupcake. Exactly. A not as sweet vanilla cupcake. Yeah. Dip it in your coffee. That's the move. So we got next. All right. Wrapped up in the tin foil. I think we got here the tamales. Oh yeah, look at that. Now, if I remember correctly. Uh, the leaf around here is called machan. It's a type of plant that's kind of native to Guatemala and the surrounding area that they'll use uh, to cook it in to impart some nice flavor to it. It, it smells good, yeah. It smells to me like yeah. jasmine tea smells. Jasmine tea? You know what it kind of smells like to me, actually? It's kind of weird, but you smokers out there, when you open up a pack of cigarettes and you smell that smell, of the you know untouched cigarettes, that's kind of like what it smells like. Now that you said that, hundred right, a hundred percent, right? I mean, it's nice. I used to love that smell. Yeah, it's making my it's, mouth water. Yeah, <laughs> I need it's a cigarette now. Cigarette? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right, look at that. That's a thing of beauty. Look at, oh fuck. Yeah, look at that. You can see the fat like glistening on that. You can tell just by looking at it that this isn't like a Mexican tamale. 
You know, it's a... Or a Oaxaca one. Or not even a tomato Oaxaca. It's yeah. kind of because of the, the leaf around the end, and, but it, um, the consistency is completely different. You know, it doesn't have as much body as a typical tamal does. It's much more, it's far more malleable, malleable. than a regular t uh, tamal. And yeah. then you see like this, um, the red, like it almost looks like a pepper going through it. Not sure what it is. And then you can see the meat just like infused throughout the entire thing. I mean, this looks fantastic. Let's see what this tastes like. Mm. Is it spicy? Yeah, it kind of has like the, almost like the consistency, almost like an oatmeal kind of, like a cream of wheat type of thing. Savory, fatty. I mean, that meat flavor just comes through. Uh, you're getting the fat from what I assume is probably lard uh, that this has been cooked in. Yeah. I mean, that's absolutely delicious. Mm. I'm part Mexican. I grew up on tamales. I absolutely love tamales. This is completely different from like what I grew up with, but it's absolutely, it, it's spectacular. It's delicious. It's, it's a really cool alternative to what I'm used to as far as tamales go. Give me your tasting notes. The flavor is so good for me. It tastes so similar to like kanji. Kanji, yes. It's almost a nice like tomato flavor uh, coming through that cuts through the fattiness of the lard and the meat. That was good, I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Yeah, that's nice. This guy's cute. Yeah, so I was really excited to try this. This is called uh, Chuchito. It's slang, Guatemalan slang for like little dog. And it comes wrapped up and the corn husk, it looks... It sort of looks like a doll. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, like a doll. Or like a Halloween harvest time decoration, yeah. you know? Um, but like, if you didn't know, just looking at this, you would think this was the tamal. But this isn't, this is the chuchito. It's like tied up in a nice little bow there. Nice little knot. There, right. pull that off. It's, you know what, you don't have to untie them. You just pull them off. <laughs> We're learning here. This is what this show's all about. You see the sauce kind of marbled throughout the exterior. Look at that. I mean, just looking at this, like this looks like this looks like a tamale. This looks like a tamale. Much more body than the uh, than the. Uh, what's the last thing I had? What did I just? See? Oh yeah, much more body than the Guatemalan tamale. Doesn't have as much moisture as the tamale did. Like this is much more on the drier side as far as the exterior. You don't have like the lard kind of like oozing really out. Together. Yeah, it's really, it's compact. This thing. Eating on the go. Yeah. Pack a lot of nutrients, a lot of calories. Eating on the go right before work for breakfast. Say goodbye. Mm. A bit denser than a Mexican tamale. The meat is super flavorful, savory, covered in this like delicious sauce. It's just like jam packed with like goodness inside. And the exterior is just kind of like a really thick masa. It's a lot of masa. It's a lot of masa, yeah. It's very, this is, this will fill you up. This is a good breakfast right here. And these, we need, we need coffee. <laughs> yeah. We need coffee with this. Bad move. To complete the meal. Like masa is my favorite part of what's calling. Mm hmm. But that's a lot of masa. That's a lot of masa. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's packed. Almost feels like clay on the outside. You know? You see the similarities between the Guatemalan cuisine and like the Mexican cuisine that I'm used to. But there's definitely some distinctions that I'm just getting to know, just learning about. And um, that makes for a pretty cool experience. Is it helpful for you to have like the base palette of your Mexican food upbringing? Do you feel like it enhances the experience for you because you're able to pick up on the subtle nuances? That are in the food? Yeah, I think so, yeah. A little bit more than the average person? Yeah, well, I feel like more connected to this cuisine uh, than I otherwise would. You know, my family, our ancestors were Mayans, you know, and the Guatemalans, they live in what was the epicenter of the Mayan civilization. And I do feel like some kind of like visceral connection, you know, to this cuisine. But at the same time, uh, in specific to Guatemalans, I'm very unfamiliar. Uh, with them as a nation, you know, as a, as a modern day people. Just not super familiar with that or their cuisine. And so it's pretty cool to like get to experience that 
in my own backyard, you know? That was a good question. See? Let's go. Later on, I came back for one more tamal that wasn't ready the first time. A type truly rare outside Guatemala. Whew. I wasn't lying, this shit is hot. It's hot, it's hot, hot. That was a close one. I thought I lost everything in the bag. So we also got the tamalito de chipilin. Chipilin is an herb that they commonly use in Mesoamerica, Central America. It's an herb commonly used in Guatemalan cooking. So you can see uh, in the tamal, they got the chipilin integrated all throughout. And it's supposed to provide a really herbaceous, kind of earthy flavor uh, to the overall profile. It's a no, it's called chipilin. I thought I Maybe it's Bailey. I don't know. Maybe it is. I'm about to find out because I'm about to taste it. Are you not supposed to eat Bailey? Maybe if you cook it like this, I don't know. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> no, let me get. I mean. Does it smell like Bailey? It doesn't smell like Bailey. You know what this smell reminds me of? Like a bag of Fritos. You open up a bag of Fritos and stick your nose into it. Okay. Mm. I'm really curious to see how this tastes. So, let's dive right in, right? Oh, yeah, okay. The uh, texture of the tamal is much more like, like putty-like, you know, or like it's not a, the usual masa that kind of breaks apart as you like fork into it. This is like really maintaining its hold together. That's really nice. Like I don't know how sensitive I am to this herb, so I don't know how much I'm actually like tasting it, you know. But the tamal itself is really nice. It's kind of like saltier than most tamales that you get. Yeah, this is nice. It's almost like on the way, like almost like a dough. It's almost like a dough-like consistency. Doughy, but it's like got that like um, thick, like that like al dente pasta. Yeah. That like. It's got some bite to it, some yeah. springiness. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. What I really like about this is the saltiness. It is salty. It's salt. There's a nice like. It tastes like almost like seawater. I wouldn't go there. It's salty like the way a chip is salty. You know, like it just has that addictive quality. You just want to like keep like eating one after the other. It's not heavy on the flavor. Subtle. Subtle, yeah. Subtle on the flavor. This is the winner for sure. Mm. 